Well, it is November the 4th. It's about 12 noon, and I hope all of you guys have already had your lunch or at least got your good burger right there. This is Lunch and Learn, brought to you by the Arkansas HVACR Association in partnership with the Arkansas Department of Labor and Licensing, HVACR Licensing Program. Of course, the most important part of the program is Tony Woodard. He's our chief inspector for the state, and I always <laughs> like to say, you get it from the horse's mouth when you talk to Tony. We're not going to talk about what end you get it from when you hear it from me. Welcome, Tony. Uh, hello. I think you exaggerate a lot of that, but the most important uh, part is what you do. So uh, well, I'm just here to ride along. Hey, we're a pretty good team. Uh, Tony, we've got a lot to cover today, and, and you've already started working on the December issue of the Lunch and Learn. And uh, my goodness, I, I let me ask you a question. As we come into this session and the next ones, I look at all these codes that we are supposed to deal with. Where did all this code stuff coming from? I mean, 30 years ago, we didn't even worry about code. No, we didn't. And, uh, <laughs> it, it's funny. And then manufacturers, I, I bl blame it over 30 years of lawsuits is what I do. That yeah, is, yeah. As someone got involved with a lawyer and they they said, okay, and then, then I know the manufacturer said, okay, we learned what that is. We'll put that in there. And uh, the education for what used to be what they said a man had a drill and a saw, it, it's unbelievable what these young men and women are supposed to know to be mechanical contractors today. Well, I think you're absolutely right. You know, nobody wakes up in the morning saying, well, what can we do to make everybody's life miserable they they go to a meeting and they hear about a fire here or a death there and they say, oh my goodness, we got to help people and solve some issues in code. So it evolves over time because the need evolves over time. Well, absolutely. ASHRAE, uh, COVID, there's been three standards through ASHRAE just due to COVID. So hmm. as, as the news magazine started, I liked it. I read it as about the horse and buggy and it was, we've evolved. Yeah, it's a long hundred years, but a lot's happened <laughs> in yes, hundred sir. years. Certainly has, has it? to move like that. Okay, well, we're talking about chimney venting and that sort of thing today, and we got some slides to look at. Uh, what are we look? Goodness, what Tony, we're doing? Surely they yeah, didn't leave that. We're kind of we're we're kind of doing a continuation off the last lunch you learned. Oh, okay. And, and October hit us, and it just wiped me and my poor guys. It 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 hammered us. We uh we were we didn't know which way we were going or where we we're going, but uh. We're going to do a continuation on this. This is one that I did meet with uh, JC out there at the deal and Godfrey Black, who was gracious enough to let us film this or take photos. And we're going to go through the corrections they made uh, about they, you know, learned, yeah, it is important to tape your gores and elbows. Uh, and what you're looking at right there, this is showing how short a run it can be. This is coming from here to an actual what would be an old floor boot that they're going to the outside wall there for the fresh air. There's hmm. no tension on it, nothing, but it it got leaned on, it broke. So, uh, you know, when you take off and run one long, it, it's very important that we we protect the gores and elbows to stop this. Uh, well, now this, we're talking about fireplaces here, aren't we? Yeah, this is in the decorative right. fireplace in the center, well, on the back side of the house. And mm -hmm. uh, these are shafts that where the mistake has been, the flexible – what's called a flex connector. They've been using them for their fresh air combustion dilution duct. Yeah. This one here is hard pipe low, and then they went high with one of the flexible, but they were using the flex, and you can't have that. It's got to be all metal in, in the shaft, in the walls, the ceilings, the floor. Anywhere it's going to penetrate, all minimum 28 gauge. And that's so, well, what kind of tape should they use there? Full back. That doesn't have to be mastic. Mastic's a good one because it's thick, but that would, that would require at least the full back. Okay. All right. Um, here is, is this from the top view after that's it got That's from the fixed? top looking down. Yes, that, that's from the top looking down. And they fall back and replay. And what you're seeing now, that's the second picture because the first picture and the first lunch you learned, that one going vertical, they had used a flexible connector and replaced yeah. it to 28 gauge metal because you're in the rated deal and got it through there and then supported it and taped it off better. Well, you know, uh, Tony, on that bottom picture there, they put some tape so it was connected to the the uh, the fireplace itself, but they they did not put 
any tape there on the rest of the goers. Why, no, why would they, they have didn't. left that they, undone? Yeah, they they were after we got these pictures. After after, unfortunately, by the time I got this, this has been sheetrock and closed in. Uh, we talked about that, and and mm -hmm. it's one of these deals. Of, okay, we'll catch it next time. Uh, lesson learned. Yeah, I, I mean, y'all can't catch everything. Uh, well, no, and they, you know, this they were willing to move to try to learn and and move forward, and and they are they're a good company, and I and I'm proud they're working with us and letting us help because we're trying to educate. They're they're not regulated. They're they're in fact uh, these individuals asked they they appreciate if there was regulation in Arkansas because they have they do this in multiple states and have to carry other regulation in the other states to do this. Uh, and they brought that up and uh, it would be a good deal. It could fall under our fire protection people, and uh, you know that way it would be more training on their end. But I, we've invited them to join us, and they're they're doing the lunch and learns now and staying involved with us and. We're going to help as much as we can. Well, okay, I, I'm confused now. You said that they're not regulated. Do they not, if they're going to do this piping and it's got to do with a heating system, would it not come under our code? No, sir, because under the 2021 IRC, this can be installed. These guys are installing them and being hired by the builder. The builder himself could go buy these appliances, install them, him or her, her their employees. Yeah, okay. okay. They do have to meet the fuel code, fire code, and the IRC building code. And then it falls into the mechanical code. They'll have to meet all of that. But uh, right now, it does not require a license for individuals to set these type of appliances. Okay, if I, if I understand correctly, they don't have to have a license to do that, but they still have to meet code. Meet code. And this company is strongly hoping that a license format in the future is moving in that direction. Would that be a D license if that happens? Uh, it could be, or it could be regulated under your the, the fire protection departments under the Department of Labor as well. to regulate mm -hmm. your, your fire alarms, smoke alarms, your ansel. It could be kind of merged in with those individuals that, you know, duct cleaning, uh, the top one hood exhaust, expression, something like into that realm. Well, <laughs> not that anybody cares what I think, but it just doesn't make any sense to me that that, our guys have to make sure they've got a license to properly vent and bring in fresh air for a gas furnace. And these people are going to be dealing with wood burning and gas appliances that we call a, a, a fireplace, and they don't have to have a license. That's that's a double standard. And that's that's what they, they showed me their regulations for the mm -hmm. other states that they work in. Some of them are more stringent and they, mm -hmm. they that's why they're they're very knowledgeable and do the continuing training and and Good we're very very oblig obligated to yes we want to do it proper we want to do it to the new code and move forward well if it's a health and safety issue it ought to come under our uh, under our code and under our license somehow but anyway i'll get i'll get off of that i bet you'll be glad of that won't you no that's all right good question <laughs> all right let me see if we can get us to move forward here just a minute all right, that's that's that flex okay. pipe that, that you was, were talking about that was it? right that was from the original one where they had you know, they had gone under the premise because it was a type B vent. It was a flexible material, but yet it's not solid. And in the sides of it are what does it meet the criteria of the rated shaft area and everything. And that's what, you know, they were going mm -hmm. above and beyond. Some of the others would just throw the flexible, but this is where they're changing. And this will be all hard pipe going all the way through. And that was what you were looking at the other picture. They did correct it. And we're, now, get, you know, we have a lot of inspectors watch these lunch and learns and we're trying to get ahead when they're putting this in, make sure that, you know, it's solid pipe. Now, if I understand correctly, to get off the subject just a little bit, anytime you've got a vent or a or duct running through a chaseway, it's got to be metal, doesn't it? Correct. Okay. And, and you can't go through a fire barrier or a thermal barrier uh, uh, unless it's metal. Is that and correct? It's not. Yeah, and uh, it's not. Hey, and this this memo that's out there with the with the board on the single family dwelling that thirty gauge doesn't apply to that. Thirty gauge is strictly used from four inch to ten inch supply duct only. Or, and you you can if it has oh. a small return, you you can't use thirty gauge here. This is twenty eight gauge minimum. This is just like your kitchen exhaust and dryer exhaust. I got you. Yes, sir. Well, I guess there's a lot for us to learn, isn't there? Every day. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> every single day. Here we go. Here, here's where you see in the old one where they had carried the double wall up. And then once they got into the area where, you know, we were teaching them as long as it's visible and you can always see it, you could go to the class one flex, which would be legal as long as they were in their six, their 14 foot and it supported every four foot or it's resting on the ceiling joist as it rolls across there. Mm -hmm. So, and this was one of the older pictures. And then I think the next one shows the correction. So if I'm understanding correctly down here, that had to be changed metal. to metal. Yep. And then when it went through, this was okay. Once you get up above the insulation level, that would be okay. Okay. Yeah. And it's got to go a certain amount of inches above the anticipated level of the insulation too. Right. And, then, and this is when they phoned it. You see, they're phoned. Ah, I see what yeah. you're saying. Yep. That picture is confusing because it's looking up at the sky. It's kind of uh -huh. confusing. Then you see the roof line coming down over there. Here yeah. was oh. the correction. Okay. Made it all metal. Got it going through the proper way. You see the old one sitting on the ground over there. As <laughs> so, I, you know, and that's a, that's a, I'm glad you pointed that out. That's a perfect example of why we do the lunch and learns. It's so much better to learn this in a lunch and learn than it is to have some stuff you're not going to be able to use laid over in the, in the garage that you might use and might wind up throwing out. It's a lot cheaper to do it this way. Well, it well, it, and, and even that those those flexible connectors that they were using cost a lot more than in your your bundle of of a four and five and six inch mm -hmm. twenty eight gauge pipe. They can buy a lot more of that. These things are pretty pricey because you know they they actually thought they were going above and beyond and mm -hmm. found out they weren't meeting. And this is a, a better, it's safer, it's better, and it's and economic wise better in their pocketbook as well. Education is one of the things that'll help you make more money than anything I can think of because you'll do it right the first time and that means you get to make more money and the customer's a lot happier and better served. There you go. Yeah, it's label. So that was one of the flex connect back that was what they were showing there that is a flex five foot and they were showing that it is rated at top five, which is, you know, that's good. I, I appreciate them, but we I, we explained to them why and why not. That was not allowed. And this is actually allowed in a, a change out scenario. When you're sitting in there and you see your full fire appliance like in a closet and you open it up and it's all within condition space, you can use the flex connector, then go up and go on through. Uh, not in the chase way. Can't be there in the chase way. Well, see this area right here where it looks like it's not connected. It's hanging over to the side. Is that yeah. is that what I'm seeing? You're you're seeing one of the cramps where it's shoved up in there a little bit heavy, looks like to me. You know, it's it's easy for me to armchair quarterback. Okay, there there's your corrective pipe going up, and now you're seeing your insulation shield, which is correct. If they ever come back and blow, they've got that wall, that wall on the other side. That behind this, you're looking at a big cathedral wall going all the way up. So this is foam on the other side. But if you ever came back and blew insulation down in this area, you had to have that 26 gauge insulation shield away from the top B vent, which is correct install. Uh -huh. Well, even even the the pipe that's going up, right, so I'm assuming that's the vent. If I understand co correctly, it's got to be at least three inches away from the foam. Three inches away from the foam, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or the 26 gauge, you can actually, you know, you the they can. You put your 26 gauge insulation shield under 802 in the chimney and flue vent, uh -huh. and then you can have then you can reduce that. You get a reduction by doing that. Okay. So the three huh. inches is but but our code now we've got one that says you're going to put this insulation shield regardless. Uh huh. Well, that's a good thing because foam is a great product if it's used right. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't get used right. Well, Tony, that wraps this up. Uh, one of the, one of the things I'd like to do at the last minute here is is ask a question that some people have. In fact, I think I talked to you about it. People who have an L license have some questions about whether or not they need to have continuing it or general liability. What 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 is the status on that L license? The L license is your it's your obligated license. They say, okay, and you welcome. You achieved the sixty five year. You made it. It is, uh, you carry that in your wallet and it allows you to do service. It does not allow you to do install nor carry registrants. So with that, you do not have to have a continued education certificate nor 
a COI, a certificate of insurance, mm. because once it's stamped to an L, it's an L. You don't pay for it again. It's it's free. You have it. You just can only perform service work. Uh, but that's, you can't, can't stay in the business. That's really an accommodation for somebody who wants to help friends and neighbors and stay yeah. active, isn't it? Yes, and it helps with wholesale. So a lot of the distributors that are working with us now are, are, are doing their due diligence to ask for license. I have several right. that you know I can go buy my products, whatever. But uh, yeah, that that uh, that ale, it's uh, we've had several. We have several that's within a year or two trying to get there, and unfortunately, we cannot circumvent the law. And uh, yeah, yeah, they just we've had some try to do board and it just won't the, the waiver, and it, it just won't sure. fall through. Uh, they can't do it. Well, if you've got any questions or compliments or complaints, code related issues, you can call five zero one six eight two. 9201 and Michael will be able to take that phone call and he'll be able then to refer your question to whoever in the department that's got the best issue. Tony has just got too many irons in the fire for him to be able to take all of those calls. So there are four inspectors across the state that can help you out as well. And and may I suggest that, you know, your first line of question it ought to be that local inspector, because they're the ones that are out there looking at it. And if there's a question that they've got, they can then get to the state inspectors. And you can, too. I'm just saying there's a whole lot more guys out there working for the cities than there are working for the states. And they're there to help you and they want to help you. Uh, it's it's a partnership that we have between the industry and our regulatory authority. Tony, I appreciate you. I look forward to uh, talking to you again in December because it sounds like it's going to be a good one. Yep, it is. We got fuel gas. We're going over in December uh, with these foam houses once again and CSST with the manifold regulator and all you inspectors out there and everybody else, I hope you tune in. It's uh, As we learn every day, it, it popped on my radar. I fell into it and I'm like, ooh, okay. But this is a good tool to get it out to everybody of uh, the proper procedures of how to do it and how not to do it. Tom, I appreciate well, you as always. Yeah, I appreciate you and appreciate Lindsay. Appreciate all the folks at their Department of Labor and Licensing because without their understanding the importance of how educational this is and how this eliminates a lot of calls that you would otherwise have. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. We're the only state in the union that's doing something like this. And I'm so proud of Arkansas because we're taking a leadership role. But we will talk to you again in December.